Hey there, hello there, ho there, it's Jen Cutter Dabby welcome you to yet another tour, and this time we are doing the 60s and 70s based on their performances at Augusta. These guys will, this decade will go after each other, 60s and 70s, pretty good. The 60s, they had their guys with 2010s and the 70s were paired up with the 2000s last year, but based on projections, these guys will be moving through each other. And yes, this is a group with three Canadians in the 1970s of Johnny Miller and Jackie Nicholas. Now, unfortunately, there were some complications uh, to do real life, like dealing with a 3000 cube um, return truck. So, unfortunately, time and with time constraints would need to be other shipped. Um, this is just going to be simply a one versus one, like. We'll simulate through all the 64, the 64 um, matchups and all that. I promise you, hopefully tomorrow I'll get you live coverage, like the coverage, and not just some bullshit stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, I would I was supposed to do the matchups of the three Canadians. Because, you know, national pride. But because of this whole thing, there's something wrong. Now, of course, I also got to explain that this is at Shinnecock Hills in January, not in Austin like it was last year. The reason why is because Shinnecock, alongside um, Brookline and Turnberry, lose out on their major status because real life, the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, the PGA Championship at what was it? Seven Hills or something? Not Seven Hills. Ah, break. Oak Hill, I think. Yeah, Oak Hill and the British Open at St. Andrews. I know that technically it's for Liverpool, but St. And because they missed St. Andrews last year, I decided to go with St. Andrews this year for the British Open thing. So, Shinnecock got demoted, in a sense, to the opener, and the 60s and 70s will be at Shinnecock. All that. Now, if there is a playoff, if there is a matchup that goes to a playoff, we'll I'll tell if I the playoff poll. But anyway, we'll just do that. And like I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you coverage, but I have commi I had commitments going for me, so I basically I'm just doing this. Oh shoot! Hang on one sec. Sorry about that. Uh, options all square after 16. No. If we go to a playoff, we go to a playoff. I'm just going to be cheeky and just do this to the 64th matchup. I know it's going to take a while anyway. So, we'll see what our first matchup is. Well, we have a hard course, fast green. Hail Irwin takes on Charles Cootie. Hail, hail Irwin. Up name. You really gotta like. Hail Irwin was. Was he? Yeah, he qualified, right? Oh no, he was second and then he fucking missed out. But Hail Irwin beats Charles Cootie. You got cooties. You got cooties. No, I don't. Is it something? Please come for a hair license. Check. Anyway, let's tee off. Oh, Tommy Jacobs beats Graham Marsh two up. Not bad. Mike Suchak beats Joe Campbell two and one. Yeah, I'm keeping my eye on other things too. Lee Trevino crushes Mason Rudolph in the five power powder, so the Mary Max wins. 
By the way, the 70s 2000s champion was Bruce Crampton in match play against Justin Rose. And the 60s 2010s, the winner was Frank Beard over Bo Winninger. So you'll see Beard and Winninger here, and so is Crampton. Straight out of Crampton. If you will. Jim Jameson defeats Dan Sykes. Jim Jameson sounds like the guy from Spider-Man. I kind of hated that douchebag because he was so... He wanted to destroy Spider-Man. Why? Because he was vigilant. George Nutson goes to extra holes against Charlie Sippert. Well, I guess I better take a good look and... Oh, this one. So Sippert versus Nutson going to extra holes. All right. Let's see what happens. Oh, Ray Floyd beats Bob Murphy. Three and one, okay. Massingale loses to Neil Coles. Like Massingale. Weird name, but whatever. So we should get to the nuts and nuts against Charlie Sippert. To me, this is kind of an awkward matchup because, you know. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Charlie Sifford, who was one of the first PGA Tour pros of the African American community, Nelson. Can I get on the green? Yes, you can. I should move. So Sifford actually had a good front nine, but the back nine. So yeah, these guys are playing tooth and nail with each other. Stroke plays does strokes doesn't really count. Sifford wants to putt. He wants to because he's like, I don't want to have Nutson has a 11 out of 36 chance. And he missed. Yikes. Sifford makes his car and he's good over Not good. Sifford botched it. Nuts and botch just kind of Oh, look at that. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. Sifford, on the other hand, I Hopefully, he does it. Hopefully, Nuts and gets his best second chance. So, well, this is for Park. Nuts and can two putt. He just needs one. So, George Nuts and big win over Charlie Sifford. So, We'll definitely see George Nutson's um, chance tomorrow. First Canadian through. Nicely done. I know I'm national. It's all about National Friday. Eh? Roberto Di Fezzenjo takes on Dave Stockton, the tragic figure of the 1968 Masters in real life, winning his match. Some kind of problem with the golf. Peter Oostenhaus beats Johnny Miller. Ooh, that's a shocker. I thought Johnny Miller was going to win. Johnny Miller was the first winner of the 70s, 2000s. Bobby Nichols beats Jerry McGee. Johnny Miller. Yeah. You know, he won in January for the 70s, 2000s. 60s, 2010s winner was Peter Thompson, by the way. The first winner at Augusta. Frank Beard, well, he won the the whole the last chance to call her for the 60 20 gets in match play. He beats Harold Henning of South Africa. So he's trying to win back to back things, which would be crazy. Dave Hale, big upset over Tony Jacqueline. I kind of liked Tony Jacklin. He's a pretty good player. Bruce Crampton beats Lee Elder one up. Elder, the first black golfer to suit up at um, Augusta in 1975, but Crampton says, no way, I'm going to win back-to-back -back titles. Bob Rosberg beats Bob Ludden two and one. Dial Finsterwald beats Dave Marr. Marr in controversy, I guess. Pun intended. 
appended. Okay. Oh, Bob Goldby losing to Howard Twitty, five and four. Is he Conrad Twitty's brother? I doubt it, but Bob Goldby losing this match. Bruce Devlin losing to Christy O'Connor, the Irishman. So O'Connor wins this match. Extra holes between Orville Moody and Jack Nicholas. Oh my gosh. Orville Moody forcing. Where are we here? I know Balding and Henning are playing right now. And Alan Handy. Hopefully Canada can get something going. So you got Moody and Nicholas. You got extra holes between Lots and Kneeport. Lots and Kneeport are going to extra holes, so. Tom Newport actually took second in the uh, first 60s 2010s tournament. Gene Lidler crushing Bob Brian Huggett 7 and 6. Lidler qualified for the tournament by getting into a wild card? Yeah, he took second to Arnold Palmer in October. Won the, the runner up qualifier and actually was close. He was in the final pairing at Augusta. All right, so here's Moody and Nicholas. Nicholas was up by three with five to play, but lost 14, 15, and 16. The other two were ties, but let's see if Nicholas can get something here. Oh, let's see if that Nicholas. And there's his job. Moody? Moody? Ooh, later. Nicholas. Oh. Ew, a shot too, that wind. Nicholas, is that close to the camp? Not the best, but we'll see what happens. Moody, is he close? He might be close. Moody first. Got it! Nicholas. Got it. I know I'm a little biased. Al Balding losing to Ellen Henney. Damn it, Balding lost to the South African. Not happy. So that's one Canadian out. Already. Fuck. Second extra hole for these people. And now Nicholas. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. He needs to let him have it. Booty for 40 feet. Nope. Nicholas now has a one out of three chance. Puts it there. Jack Nicholas survives and we'll move on to round two. Orville Moody must be peeved. I don't care. Anyway, here's Dick Lotz and Tom Mead Port. Uh, nice battle. Lotz was up by two before go. He had lots of luck, but Mead Port was forced <clears throat> the issue. Need the extra time. We've got an extra hose. Lots. Hmm. From bunker to bunker, that ain't good. Kneeport. Kneeport overshot that wind. That freaking, freaking wind. All right. Let's see if Dick can put that one in. With lots of luck. Nope. Kneeport. Let's get close to the pitch. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For par. Missed by an inch. And now, a 1 in 6 chance for Newport. No. They'll have to go to the middle. Hand. Off to another hole. Alright, on to the second extra hole. Newport in lots. I know it doesn't seem. Ooh, that bunker. It wasn't for that stupid bunker. Well, they both hit that bunker. Well, Dick makes a good shot. Here's Newport. Is he close? Yes, he is. Newport's close. To the pin. Yes, he is. For par. 
How can you miss that punt? In this match play thingy, so that's D off. A lot more matches to go, mind you. Dale Douglas beats Lou Graham, okay. And remember, the matches are randomized. So you could see two fantastic golfers go against each other, or the opposite. You can see two guys who, like, who the fuck are they? Who the fuck are they? Uh, extra holes between Archer and Lima. I think George Archer. Yeah, Archer and Lima. So I think, how did Archer get in? Oh, he he got in through a qualifier, the second chance qualifier. So Archer did that one. And I think he, yeah, he did that. Uh, Mark Hayes, big upset over Tommy Bolt, the guy who actually went, who actually twice was a runner up. But couldn't get through that qualifier, so yeah. Extra holes between Yancey and Billy Casper. I think they did. They both qualify Yancey and Casper for Augusta. I remember Yancey. Think yeah, Yancey won one of the seventies two thousands events. He won in June. He won it at Shinnecock, not Shinnecock. Sorry, at Brookline and. And uh, Cas and Casper qualified because he took a second place. No, Casper won in Toronto at Glen Abbey. So yeah, I'm in Toronto. Charles Code beats John. Squee, squee, squee. So we got a couple more matches that are in extra holes. So it's Archer and Lima. Tony Lima. I don't probably like Ashley Young. So Archer moves on. Harney and Blankus are going extra holes. So, man, we're not even done one half of the draw. Okay, so we have Casper and Yancey. Oh, yeah, I forgot to check the scoreboard for the other match. Yancey and Casper battle each other tooth and nail. Casper, a key birdie on 18 to force this. Whatever. Yancey, a little wide right. Casper. Mm. Yancey will get close to the pin. Meanwhile, Casper. No, well, that is close, actually. Don't be fooled. We're part. <laughs> Keep going. Bob Charles is a big upset of King Venturi, so Charles moves on to the round 64. So, yeah. Yancy and Casper going to the second extra hole. Ooh, that's in the bunker. Yancey for Birdie. Why not? Casper, well he's close. I don't know how handy he was. Now you got Hernie and Blankus. Great matchup. Parnies won three of the last four holes. To the situation. Like this. And that. Oh, oh man. Oh, really bad shot by this guy. What 
a shot. Blankus. Oh, I'm like, he was hoping he'd do one better. Well, no. That wasn't even a good shot to get on putting service. Well, two putts for Hardy. So Paul Hardy sends Blankus packing and moves on. Arnold Palmer, Arnold Palmer upset by George Bayer. Palmer upset. Ugh. I like Arnold Palmer. Can't believe he's out. Very cool. Right. Second shot. Third playoff hole with these guys. Uh oh. Well, both in the fescue. Fescue me. With, uh, I think with this being at the third playoff hole, I think every other playoff hole will just simulate. Yeah, I'll just simulate the rest of it for par. Yeah. For the match. Oh, how, Casper, how? That's the most from Boros and Tom Weisskopf. So Weisskopf, Julius Boros, both I think they both qualified, right? Boros and Weisskopf? Yeah, I think they did. If I remember correctly, Boros and Weisskopf. Yeah, Weisskopf in November 1 hit the tournament at um, Quail Hollow. And the other guy. And Boros won in August in his tour at Eastlake in Atlanta. So, I hope I'm going to request them. You know, you're a champion or you're one of those super face guys. Well, Jason Day qualifying for the second place thing was the only way to go because he was a runner up in February to Dustin Johnson in Scottsdale. Then he went to the and then he had a great Sunday finish. Really, Casper, what the fuck are you thinking? That was terrible. Not even close. For the match. No. Casper for bogey. Now you got to put this in. Now put it. There you go. The Bert Yancey says, go Casper is packing. So that's not good. Yeah. We'll just leave it. We'll just leave the um but all in against Bobby Mitchell. All in, Allen, but it's like all in. I be all in, yeah, I be all in. I am in all in. I am in all I am all in. <laughs> extra holes between Ken Still and Jim Colbert. I'm not gonna do those guys extra holes because I barely know these guys. That wouldn't be fair. And Boros takes down Weisskopf. So Boros, big win for him. As I said, it could be star versus star or unknown versus unknown. It was star versus star. Uh, Ken Still wins in the playoff against Colbert. Uh, Rod Funsip, big win over Andy North. Didn't like that, but don't like that. Uh, Jerry Pate crushes Tommy Aaron to find powder five and three. Tommy Aaron is the guy who faithfully had that stupid pencil trick. Jerry Pate won the tournament for the 70s in... No, sorry, he took second place one time. And he qualified for the thing. He was close, too. Sorry, I got a message. Oh, I had that. So, Dane Beeman beats Jerry Hurd. I did. I heard of that one. All right. Uh, Lon Hankel, big upset for Bill Kratzert. I gotta figure out who the Canadian faces and then work from there. Hopefully tomorrow 
I'll give you some live action. Like, shoot the holes. Forrest Feltzer versus Dave Reagan. He wins by a stroke. I'm the whole Forrest. Gabe Brewer crushes Peter Butler seven and six. Yeah, that's his name. I know that people are probably going to shut that name down, but you can't. Gary Player, a big win over Doug Ford. Not the politician, but the golfer who actually qualified for the um, second chance turn. Went through the second chance qualifier and got to Augusta. Um, Bill Collins beats Wes Ellis. I don't know who those guys are. Sorry. Yeah, there's like 18 games going on. Lionel Haber, big upset over Jack Fleck. I like Jack Fleck. Now we are getting, now the bottom half. Now the bottom groups are facing each other off. Art Wall beats L. Guyberger. Did Guyberger qualify? L. Guyberger. Well, Alison Brent went in as a tournament winner. Uh, Larry Sigler beats Mike Hill. Move on. I'm hoping for Mo Norman to win so that we can have two Canadians. Otherwise, I'll have to figure out who I want. Hubie Green beats R.H. Sykes, the guy that looked like Shock Plant when he was younger. Two and one. Um, Ed Sneed beats Phil Rogers. Five and three. Gary Grell beats Jack Burke Jr. Big win for him. Doug Sanders with the big win over Jackie Cuppet. He couldn't cup it hard enough. Extra holes for Roger Mopey and Burt Green. Mopey, you know, a great co soccer, um, great commentator. Why did I say soccer commentator for the life of me? Pete Brown meets Billy Maxwell. Yeah, I know. J.C. Sneed beating Don January, who could, can't win a tournament in January. Ha 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 ha, pun intended. Green takes down Mopey, so Mopey is not too pleased with himself. Well, why would you be? Tee off. Don Massengale beats Bobby Cole. Then no Massengale had a pink hat on. That's kind of progressive. Uh, Bo Winninger, who took second in the 60s 2010s tournament in December, loses to Dick Meyer, so Winninger can't go to another final. I know that Crampton. I, I don't know if Crampton won or not. I don't remember. Johnny Pot beats Cal Nagel two and one, so big win for Johnny Pot. I don't know if has Crampton gone yet or no. I see Peter Thompson somewhere, but Johnny Pot. I don't know. Did Crampton did Crampton go or no? Oh, he was in number 13, okay. Crampton did win, okay. So Crampton and Frank Beard are trying to go for the double. Because I'm like, Crampton? I think I saw him. Randy Glover beats Ron Streck by 3-2. and two. Let's score 3-2. and two. 
So it looks like we have one Canadian for sure. Netson, but then I gotta find out what matches I could do. Jim Weisher is beating Gardner Dickinson Jr. Hmm, that's a weird name. What are weird names with? Whatever. Mo Norman crushed by Brian Barnes. Darn it. So we'll have only one Canadian, Netson. Coverage and then I'll have to fill the space. Chi Chi Rodriguez beats Jay Habert. I know one, but Chi Chi stops the from the, the Habert double from happening. Extra holes between Bernard Gallagher and Mo Bambridge. Mo Bambridge looks so old, but from the 1940s. What is there? And Bambridge with the win over Gallagher. Uh, extra holes between Bob Dixon and John Mahaffey, who looks like. I guess Stuart from Parks and Rec. I think that's where the this is. Uh, Larry Hinson beats Ted Kroll. Uh, Bob Dixon beats wins the playoff against Mahaffey. Kermit Sarley beats Dave Eichelberger. So he wins that match. And no, Peter Thompson loses to Greer Jones. Not good. So Peter Thompson can't do the double. All right, so next round. You know something rough my ass. So Nudson will face Mike Suchuk. So it's a Suchuk match. Two, 12. We'll keep an eyeball on Alan Henning versus Gene Lidler. So if... Uh, Balding had won, he would have faced Gene Lindler. And I know Lindler was close in Augusta. And then we will keep our eyes on... Well, yeah. So Bart, it would have been Kermit Sarley versus my, our, my man from Kitchener. So, um, hmm. What do I want? Tony Pot. Gur Jones. Oh, and here goes Jones. Because I know, well, Crampton, Crampton was early and so was Frank Beard. Crampton 7, Beard is what? Beard's in matchup number 6, okay. Um, who do I want? Do I just want those two or no? Well, Gary Player strikes me. So we'll do the Felser um, Gary Player thing. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. All right, so that's it for this round. Hopefully, I give you more live action next time. I'm Jeff Diamond. Adieu.